Hey everybody, welcome to the studio of Carini Arts. I got some exciting news today. Today, Nova Color, my favorite paint brand for the past 20 years, dropped the Carini Bundle, a carefully curated collection of my favorite colors from the past two decades. Today, I wanted to come on, share my bundle with you. I'm going to show you all the different colors, tell you why I chose them. You can find the bundle at novacolorpaint.com. You just go under shop, you select artist bundles, and there's the Carini Bundle. For a limited time, while supplies last, you can get a free NFT. First 42 people get an NFT of my work, something that I created directly from the bundle here. I also have a sticker that comes with it. So while supplies last, everybody will get a sticker that has an image of the piece that I created with my slogan on it and a QR code. The QR code will take you to a video of me creating the painting in action. So playing with technology, with QR codes, NFTs, lots of cool stuff, lots of free stuff. So check it out, novacolorpaint.com, my favorite brand of acrylic paints for the past two decades. So let's start off talking about my bundle. And I think it only makes sense to start with a primer. So we start off with priming our canvases, unless you're working with pre-primed canvases and you like to just work with the factory base. Uh, I personally get raw canvas most of the time and I do the priming myself. So a lot of times I'll use white, but I really like to use black. My slogans, don't be afraid to be different, be afraid to be the same. So by starting with black, whereas most people start with white, you're already setting yourself up to do something that's just radically different, have different vibes, different feel than what other people are doing. So black gesso, really cool effects. The colors just magically pop on it. It's matte, so it's flat. Really cool stuff to work with. If you haven't, you got to try working with black gesso. This is something that I buy in bulk because I use so much of it. So anything like your whites or your glazes or anything that you really use a ton of, I strongly recommend buying in bulk. And that's one of the benefits also of working with Nova Color, the factory direct. And so they're more cost effective. And if you buy in bulk, say a 16 or a 32 or gallon size, as opposed to a four ounce, you'll notice that the unit cost based on volume goes down significantly as you go to the higher sizes. So you can save money by buying in bulk if there's colors that you use a lot of. So there we go with our black gesso. I think it only makes sense next to go to our titanium white. So that is our main white. That's what we're going to use for our tinting. So tinting means any color plus white. This is an opaque color, which means that it has full coverage. It'll cover over something completely. And it is a light fastness level one. So it's rated on a scale of one to three, three being uh, the least light fast and light fastness refers to its ability to uh, basically withstand the test of time, be archival and handle UV rays, be UV resistant. So level one means very strong, three means it's on the weaker side and three is gonna be something like your fluorescence and colors like that. But if you're dealing with a three or a two, you can mix it with a one. You may lose some of the properties of the color but it's like a hybrid. So you'll start building up its strength in a manner of speaking. So titanium white, something I go through a lot. I get gallon sizes of this now from Nova Color and they have a pour top for the gallon size white. So what I'll do is I'll get the gallon size and then I'll just refill the 32 ounce that goes on my cart when it's ready to do so. So next, this is another color that I use a tremendous amount of. It's the iridescent basing glaze. So this is more of a medium, but the iridescent basing glaze who doesn't like shiny stuff? So iridescent means that it's like flaky, it's shiny. And the base and glaze means that you could use it as a base or something as a glaze to essentially solidify something that can help with the UV resistance as well. But I'll mix this with essentially everything that I use because I don't use anything straight out of the tub or the carton. So uh, by mixing something, anything with my colors, you're making your palette distinctly your own. So a big part of what I do is creating my own signature palette, something that is my own, so it doesn't look like everybody else's work. And sometimes that just means using a bit of the iridescent base and glaze or really anything at all, but just not using something straight out of the container. So next I have sparkling pearl. So this is a translucent pearl color. And this is another color. I like shiny stuff because who doesn't like shiny stuff? And so great for effects, for accents, and I'll mix this with pretty much all the colors that I utilize. These mix so cleanly with anything that is on the translucent or transparent side. And a lot of the colors that I chose for you are on the transparent side. And I also picked the majority of my colors from the primary 
spectrum of the color palette. That being because you can mix a lot of your secondaries and tertiary colors with the primaries that I chose for you. So I really only chose secondary colors, tertiary colors, accent colors that I really, really am fond of because I wanted to create a functional palette with a lot of versatility for you. So the next color that I chose for you is the peach tone. And this is a color that in my earlier years I really didn't like because I like things super pure, super saturated, super bright. And I thought, ah, peach, it, it kind of dulls it out. But it's a great color that you can use for tinting in addition to white. So you can tint with your peach tone. You can tint with your white. You can tint with a combination. But it's something that really softens up the colors, gives them a little bit more of an earthy tone. And when I was working with more of a pastel color palette, which I did for a number of years, I absolutely lived by this and loved using it. So check out the peach tone. Now we're going to move to my yellows. So I chose Indian yellow. I'm not a huge fan of, I'm not against it because every color has its value, has its properties, has the things that it represents. So there's a time and a place for every color. But I don't often lean to like a canary yellow. And part of the reason being is that it's one of the more limited colors on the spectrum in terms of where you can go with it. So I prefer a warmer, brighter yellow, more of a sun yellow and Indian yellow. And this very much reminds me of like a Van Gogh color that he would use for some of his sunflower paintings. But this is a great color for glazing and for washes and for effects. You mix this with the iridescent basin glaze and the sparkling pearl and it does some really magical stuff. You can have some great effects with this, some great bases and so much versatility. So Indian yellow, absolutely love this. If you haven't tried it, there's a reason that's part of my bundle. So next, yellow ochre. This is another color that if you'd asked me years ago, I would not have picked. My mentor, Jane Brucker at Loyola Marymount, she, when I was a student, did a lot of stuff in this color palette. And it, it just wasn't the color for me, a color that I'd like to utilize with my palette at the time. But for some reason, as I go through different phases, I find the colors that I didn't utilize end up on my spectrum. And certain colors that I was using a lot of before may leave my spectrum. But this is a beautiful, earthy, yellow that has a lot of versatility as well. You can mix some nice earthy greens with this, mixing it with the right colors. And if you tint it with white, it can also soften it. So it's a little less on the earthy side, but it doesn't leave you with that super bright canary yellow. So we'll stay in the primary range and we'll move to quinacridone red. So I love the quinacridones. When it comes to the warm palette, the, the reds, the purples, the violets, I love quinacridone. So this is another color that's great for glazes and has a lot of versatility. So again, I picked a lot of colors that are on the transparent or translucent side, but if you build them up right, they can certainly have a, a degree of opacity, but by choosing the transparent or translucent, I, I think that it creates a lot more depth and a lot more brilliance to the colors. So I wanted you to have some really quality colors here with a lot of versatility. So next, we have quinacridone magenta, so staying with the quinacridones. So this is another color that yields just an absolutely beautiful pink, just like the red, but this one a bit on the cooler side. And then those, if you were to pair them with our phthalo turquoise, you can get some real 80s vibes. So absolutely love this color as well. So when it comes to the cooler colors, I love all of the phthalos. Now, if you were to mix phthalo turquoise and phthalo red, or even more so quinacridone magenta, or I'm sorry, not phthalo red, quinacridone red, uh, but the quinacridone magenta, it creates some beautiful purples and violets. So you can get a whole spectrum just from using these colors right here. So next we have our phthalo green. So this is a, a beautiful green, very translucent. And I can make this more earthy by mixing it with something like the yellow ochre, I can soften it up with a bit of the peach tone. So those are easy ways to work with that. And it also mixes great with our upcoming blues. So then we have our phthalo blue deep or phthalo blue green shade. Now there is a red shade to this, but I just happen to like the green shade. And this is my favorite blue of all the blues. Now blue is my favorite color on the spectrum. Generally speaking, I go through my phases where I may be in a red phase or an orange phase or even a yellow phase at times, even a canary yellow phase at times. 
But generally speaking, I'm a big fan of blues. Uh, I love the Van Gogh palettes. There's something about blue. It's just such a versatile color. And it has such a range and there's so many feelings, emotions you can go with. You could almost create effects that feel warm with certain blues. But Thalo Blue of all the blues is my blue of all blues. So Thalo Blue. Next we got Endin Throne Blue. So this is a beautiful midnight blue. I would very much describe this as another Van Gogh-ish blue. This one can go purple very easily. Uh, but I love to mix this with the iridescent base and glaze, lay that over the black gesso. And then if I varnish it again, it creates this luminous glowing effect. It's just absolutely gorgeous. Now, as I'm speaking, I realized after doing live feeds on several other platforms that I, I forgot a color. So there's a color in my bundle. And so I guess anybody that uh, is here on YouTube, you're, get, you're getting the extra information, the extra footage and content here. I forgot to pull out the Payne's Gray, which is part of my bundle. Now, the Payne's Gray is a very blue-gray, but it's another color that is really versatile. You can do so much with it. You can really create some neutrals with it by mixing it with your titanium white and your peach tone, or you could stay on the dark side, almost go black with it, and mix with uh, the Indian Throne Blue or the, the Thalo Blue. Just so much range to that. You can mix it with the yellow ochre and it'll almost create some very earthy greens. So that's another color that I will accent with the yellow ochre in order to create some of those earthy greens that I want for things like plants and, and things of that nature. Now, another color that goes very close to black or closest to black is your carbazole dioxazine violet. So you can see there where it's really built up that it almost looks like it's black, but it's also a great color for glazing and washes uh, when utilized as a transparent color. Now this is a light fastness two, but as I mentioned, you mix it with the light fastness one and it will resolve that issue for you. And the truth is, is the two is going to be fine in most cases. It may just not last 150 years or something like that if it's outside or whatnot. But if you properly varnish something or keep it so it's not in direct sunlight all the time, you're probably not going to have an issue. But just so that you're consciously aware of what your paints do, how they work, Wanted to share that information with you. So again, go to novacolorpaint.com. Check out the Karini bundle. You can also go to kariniarts.com. You can find my shirts, my hoodies, and so much more there, including my blog, my shop, my podcast. But feel free to send me your questions, your comments, and I'll be happy to address them. But thank you to Nova Color Paint for the opportunity. Been using them for many, many years, and to be able to curate my own collection of colors and to share them with you feels like a real honor. And so I'm curious to see what you do with these. So please feel free to purchase your bundle, to tag me, let me know you purchased it. I want to see what you do with your sticker, with your NFT, but I also want to see what you do with the palette. So if you create something, tag me on the various social media platforms. You can find all my platforms at kariniarts.com. But on Facebook, I'm Karini Arts. On Instagram, I am Acrylic Alchemy. I like to have a different name for every page because I like to be the author of my own destruction and create difficulty for myself for no reason. So have a great day. Stay safe. Be well. I will see you next time. KariniArts.com. Get your Karini bundle at NovaColorPaint.com.